Well, good morning, folks, and welcome back to uh, another very exciting episode of TRF. Today, we are starting episode at uh, the Holiday Inn in Kilgore, Texas, home of the Mighty Rangerettes, I think. But more importantly, the home of uh, Skeeter Boats. And speaking of Skeeter Boats, we are here at 5.30 in the morning at the Skeeter Boats plant, the factory here in Kilgore, Texas, to do a little bit of a photo shoot this morning. So if you guys are new to the channel, you just clicked on one of my videos for the first time, of course, first, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you guys are here. My channel is all about catching bass, catching fish, having a good time, and of course, teaching you guys stuff along the way. So what Skeeter has been gracious enough to do is to bring me on board as one of their content creators. And so I get to create awesome videos and photos from a brand new Skeeter boat every year. And of course, as part of that, I get to shoot photos and videos of some of their brand new boats and especially this year the new FXR and so this video is going to detail kind of what it looks like to be a fishing photographer. I know a lot of you guys out there want to know how to make a living in the fishing industry and YouTube is a great way to do that. You know fishing professionally is a great way to do that but also being a content creator whether it's you know photography or videography and so hopefully this video explains uh, kind of my perspective on how I shoot photos. I'm gonna explain some settings. I'm gonna explain you know the best way to shoot a bass boat running through the water that kind of stuff. I'm excited for you guys to be a part of this video. If you guys are new please subscribe to this channel. I hope that you enjoy this content and we'll see you guys out on the water. Man, like I've said folks, I am excited. This is gonna be a, a fun experience. My first like, I don't know, real job with Skeeter. They've had me do, oh, did they hit a stump? I think they just hit a stump. My first real job with Skeeter, like I said, uh, they've had me do some content work for the uh, the dealer meeting and the photo shoot and uh, all that jazz, the owner's tournament, but this is my first real like contract work with them. So excited to shoot the brand new boats. The FXR is an incredible new boat. Skeeter hasn't innovated for a long time. But if you guys missed my video where I test drove the, uh, the FXR for the first time, I'll link it up here in the corner and I'll also put it down in the description below. But as you can see, we got the boats launching into the water. That's a pretty boat. That is a gorgeous boat. Good grief. I think we're going to start with some fishing shots this morning. So we basically have to get two more of the FXRs today to finish out their catalog photographs. And so I'm going to get some fishing shots. I'm going to get some running shots and just kind of have fun and mix up my variety. So let's get the camera set up. So I brought a few lenses this morning, but I think the majority of the time I'm going to be shooting on my 55 to 210. Now, if you guys are curious, the camera body that I shoot on, it's basically like, in my opinion, the best vlog and photography lens that Sony makes for the price, and that is the Sony a6500. Uh, I do like Sony over Canon just because Sony has better video qualities, and as you guys know, I'm a YouTuber before uh, I was anything else, and so um, video is very important to me. I know Canon does take a better raw photo. Uh, Sony's, of course, getting better at that, and especially their higher end cameras. But the, I think the A6500 for the price is an incredible value. Uh, unless you're like printing photos, you don't need more than 24 megapixels. So I'm gonna take off my 10 to 18. I'm gonna put on the 55 to 210. Probably take most of the photos from this camera boat here of the FX20 here in the morning with this lens. This somehow looks a little cooler if I cock it over to the side of here. <laughs> no, not really. Not really. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. Keeping your camera close to the water, it gets foggy like, really in like three seconds. Once this, once the sun gets up, it'll burn all this stuff off. And it can, it can get a really cool shot. You just have to get it quick. And hey, uh, Andrew, try and make the catch. Y'all try and kind of fish towards us a little bit. Let me turn around. Yeah. This way? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what I'd rather yeah. have it do. Okay, got it. Back, so. Yeah. So make so yeah, make your cast back this way. I'll tell you when. Ready? All right. Three, two, one, cast. Yep. Just like that. There we go. Some good stuff right there. Those fanny packs look good on you guys. That Real good. Uh-huh. If anybody can pull it off, it will be me. That's right. Oh, lens. Stop getting foggy. It's like I want to get the super low shot, but it comes with the risk of foggy. Now, usually you guys don't want to wipe your lens with your shirt. Not really recommended, but you do have, but I do have a UV filter on every single one of my lenses. That way, when I'm wiping it, I'm wiping a filter just a clear, you know, light absorbing filter. And I'm, I'm, that way I'm not wiping the actual lens itself. Andrew, make a few casts right here at the camera while you're shooting. Oh. 
Thank you, sir. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, yes. I think I got it. Try to point your nose. Try to point your nose towards uh, that point there. We are joined this morning by Brady. You guys, if you've been on the channel for a long time, first off, thank you. You guys are awesome. Uh, but also, Brady was on the channel three, four years ago. What? Working a pine cove. Actually, he was probably also on it this year at the uh, Ski Drone Tournament. He's a good buddy of mine that works here at Skeeter. Uh, go ahead and turn us to the right here. Yep. First tip I have for you guys in photography is that good communication with your, uh, your not your product, your, uh, your, your models, your client is very important because they, uh, they need direction. Especially when you're working with people. Of course, when you're working with product, you, you can set the product up yourself. But with people, you need to have really good direction. Yeah, turn us a little bit right. Oh, yeah. Good looking shot. So I switched lenses to the wide angle lens to get some really, really up close wide shots of the FXR20. But now it's time to crack open, crack open a cold one with the boys. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Or as my dad calls this, uh, unicorn pee. <laughs> so now what we're doing is we're switching out the 10 to 18 for the 40 prime. Cause we gotta do some running shots. So you guys will, uh, pro the audio is probably not gonna be too great <laughs> on these next few video clips, but we're gonna be running, what do you think, 60 miles an hour? Yeah. Going 60, getting these, uh, getting these shots. Dandy. So the two lenses that I'm alternating between for this running shot, now that we're pretty close, is the uh, 10 to 18, usually zoomed in all the way to 18, and then the 30 prime. If I had like a 24, that would be, 24, 26 would be a little bit better, but working with what I have, the uh, the settings that I'm using right now, if you guys are curious, uh, sitting right around like F4 to F8 uh, for aperture, depending on how much separation I want from the boat in the background, and then usually uh, 1600 for the shutter speed. I keep ISO as, as low as I possibly can. I'm at 160 right now. I just prefer to keep ISO low, unless you're shooting, of course, in low light, then you have to crank it up. But during the daytime, there is zero reason to have ISO above, you know, 200 or so. At least in my experience, that's what I think. What do you think, Brady? Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Now 
guys know that I'm not a touring professional angler, I love doing the whole YouTube thing, and now that I've realized that I can make a living uh, doing the YouTube and, and content creation like photography and videography, uh, I don't have to uh, pursue professional fishing. Another way that you guys can have a living in the fishing industry without actually fishing professionally is working for an industry company like Skeeter. So, we're gonna ask Brady a few questions about, about Skeeter. So, Absolutely. what what made you want to work at Skeeter? So I, I grew up in East Texas and a long time passion for Skeeter and boats in general. Um, besides fishing, I'm passionate about all boats, you know, wakeboard boats and, and bass boats, but it's local, it's close to my family, so that was very appealing to me. And uh, I had a few, a few contacts from living here locally and fishing out of Skeeters my whole life and uh, just kind of stayed in contact with those people, shook some hands and uh, showed my face when I was in college and, you know, the cards, cards fell yeah. where they did and I'm I'm loving it. So how important is that? You said shaking hands and meeting faces. How important is that? It's it's extremely important and really ext extremely uh, easy to do. Um, just be confident with yourself and, and when you meet someone in the industry, um, you know, follow up with them. Just, I mean, you know, I send them an email, email every six months or so. Just let them know, hey, you know, I'm, college is going good for me. Here's what I'm doing with my club, uh, you know, with OSU and I fish for them. I just let them know, hey, here's the successes I've had with the club to kind of build my resume and rapport with them and just stay in contact. And, you know, ultimately um, they're willing to, to, you know, oh, you know, find a position for me. And, um, you know, then as soon as you get, get your foot in the door, you're off to the races, the sky's the limit for you. Yeah. And so I've talked to you guys about that in videos before, but networking is the most important thing in the fishing industry. Um, the, the more you can get your face in front of industry people, industry executives, uh, the better chance you have of getting a job. And so um, I know a lot of you guys want to be pro anglers, uh, but not to be negative Nelly, but just the chances of, of a lot of you guys becoming pros is very slim. It's like the chances of kids playing NFL, very slim. Uh, but there's still plenty of opportunities to work in the fishing industry if that's what you want to do. And working for a company like Skeeter is definitely a pretty cool opportunity. So that's my little encouragement. And now it's back to taking fishing shots. I'm gonna start with the 10 to 18 because now we don't have as bad of a shadow. Uh, our boat is not casting any shadow onto theirs like it was in the morning, so it won't be as hard to get close shots. So you guys can't see it on the GoPro for sure, but there is a uh, there's a wild hog on the bank over there. I'm gonna switch this to video real quick and show you guys. Dude, they're all sorts of colors. Yeah, there's about six of them. That's crazy. That's awesome. Now we've been getting some product shots of uh, the inside of the Skeeter, whether it's at the bow, over here at the console, back wiring, all that product stuff. So what exactly do you want a picture of? Just all like... Basically just a wide shot of the okay. hand side of it. I'm gonna, have you, I'm gonna have you get back here then. Okay, yeah. The symmetry is important. We are switching boats from the 21 to the 20. Gotta get some product of this one as well. Suction cup, please don't fail me now. day in the neighborhood a beautiful day for a neighbor won't you be mine well, we are wrapping up the photo shoot here gonna log the zx250 back to factory and uh, yeah we'll kind of wrap up as soon as we get there and talk to brady a little bit more what a day we are back here at the skeeter plant we're actually gonna get up in one of the filming boats to film my outro here this is the zx that they use for the official photo shoot we did not need it for today's shoot but how do i get in here from the back there we go can you guys believe that they go 60 miles an hour with this thing on the water? That's pretty crazy. I've been up here when they go that fast and it's fun. But yeah, that is all that I have for you guys. Again, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I love to provide some sort of value in every single video, whether you are learning about fishing tips or whether you are learning, again, like camera gear today uh, and kind of t camera tips on how to be a photographer. Like I said, there are so many ways to make money in the fishing industry besides uh, just being a professional angler. And I hope that I showed you guys that today. And as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button down below. That like button actually helps a ton with the YouTube algorithm. So please hit the like button, comment your favorite part of the video down below. And of course, if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer those in the comment section. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of TRF.